Okay, so um, yeah, we looked at a bunch of stuff in the last video, uh, went through a bunch of the tools, talked about how to make an initial artboard. Uh, we need to make some more artboards because you, you will need six artboards, okay? So you have three different logos you're going to do and then a black and white and color version of each of those logos, all right? Um, so let's open up our artboard uh, menu. That's that little icon down there. I'm going to turn off all the lights. What is your saying? It's three different logos. and Three, three different lo logos to a black and white and color version of each okay. six artboards. So we're going to make uh, more of our artboards. Now, if you open up your artboard, um, menu and you hit the the new document uh, button this little one down here um, you just hit that a bunch of times you're gonna get your three logos or three artboards um, hold on, just a sec all right so it'll make your artboards um, so it's this just new document icon okay um, now you may get like I just got a warning saying it was outside the canvas so what I'm gonna do is rearrange my my artboards um, All right, so as always, maybe just uh, follow along and take notes. That way we don't spend two hours just on the demo. Sound good? And then you guys can refer back to the video or ask me questions What's while you're working. Um, it's up to you. Uh, I, I find 1,500 to 2,000 pixels per artboard is, is usually pretty good. Um, all right, so if you do run out of canvas space like I just did, you can rearrange your artboards, which I actually want you to do anyway, because I want three on top and three on the bottom. Um, how you do that is you can click on this edit artboard button. Um, oops, sorry. Document setup, edit artboards, and this will let you move and drag um, an artboard around. Okay. Um, you also have your in your options bar when you're under your edit document um, functionality, I suppose. Wait, you can also make just go back to the video, okay? Just wait, just watch what I'm doing and go back. It's okay. I just don't want to get I don't want to get caught off tangents and spend two hours just on the demo, okay? Um, so then you can just hit new document again, and it'll attach a new document to your cursor, and you can kind of bring that in. You can always line them up. You get the little pink uh, um, smart guides, which I feel like it's not really being very smart. There we go. Um, let me make a new one, bring it down here, and then that gives us our artboards. Uh, I thought there was, no, okay, perfect. All right, and then you just, you can hit escape or you can select another tool and that gets you out of your um, document editing mode. If you still want more room between some of these, like maybe I'm not entirely, um, sorry, so I made a seventh artboard. I think that seventh one. Maybe I'm not totally happy with like how close those are together. You know, separate them some more. I'll give you a little bit of a space. All right, so I'll do version. There we go. So really, you can just sort of rearrange these any way you want. Um, it's kind of difficult to see, but whatever your active artboard is, so like down here on my artboard selection or artboard window, you can see I have artboard five selected. There's this really sort of faint black outline on it, where the other ones have like a gray outline. It's very difficult to tell. Um, if you just click inside the artboards, you can kind of see it sort of becomes that active artboard. Um, you kind of you'll develop a feel for it, or you can just sort of make sure that you have the right artboard selected by checking your artboard window. Okay. Um, usually, when you're dragging and moving things around, it's going to be pretty automatic anyway, uh, so it wouldn't be too difficult. All right, um, if you have your sketches that you want to bring into um, Illustrator, you can do that a number of ways. Um, if you have a phone, you can just take a picture of it. Um, and then you can you know, upload it in any way that is easy for you. I'm trying to see if I have any drawings in here that I can upload really quick to use. Uh, don't. Um, there's a couple different things it'll do. Let's. All right, who's got some? Who's got? Uh, let me do somebody's sketches. Let me do this one in Drew. Okay. 
Okay, let's take a picture. Let's see. Let's see if the airdrop actually works today. Airdrop doesn't always work for me. Airdrop, yeah. All right, I'm just going to put it in Dropbox. It scares you? Why does that scare you? Airdrop's really handy. I like Airdrop. When it works. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no. I just put mine in, in Dropbox, so it should show up here in a second. There it is. All right, so um, get it somehow onto your computer, any way you can think of, email it to yourself, whatever. Then drag it and drop it on the icon, like always, so it opens as its own file. It'll open probably pretty big. Um, you can make it smaller. Um, it is a raster image, okay? Which, if you remember, rasters are pixels, and we're in a vector drawing program, so we need vectors. Now, there's a couple different ways you can handle this. Um, you can either lock it and then grab a pen tool. It's not going to let me. Uh, I'd put a layer above it. Uh, lock that layer, make a new layer, grab your pen tool, and just sort of trace it, which would also work. Um, let me switch. There we go. So you can do that if you want. Would you click to make the same stuff disappear? Oh, I just switched between. Um, uh, stroke and fill over here. Oh. All right. Uh, so if I make that thicker, you can kind of see it has a stroke now. All right. Um, so that's you know your hand, the sort of manual hand way of doing it. Oops. Oh yeah, because it's a white background. <laughs> well, let me change the color. <laughs> Let's change the color. Something we can see. So that gives me, you know, that gives me that, which is kind of a, you know, hand drawn stuff like that it has a nice charm to it. Uh, if you want it to be a little cleaner though, um, what you can do is use this as your basic arrangement, and then and this is what I was talking about earlier. Bring in some type. So I just made an E that is super tiny. Oops. Bring up my character tool, and let's make my type a lot bigger. Where is it? Okay, I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's like hidden somehow. There we go. All right, bring my E in. Um, I'm going to pick a different font really quick. Ouch. Um, yeah, that's. we'll go with this one just for now. Uh, all right, uh, is there a bold? It's a bold. I'm get it nice and thick. Uh, I'm going to get it roughly the size I want it to be. And then I'm going to create outlines with it. All right. And then I can go to transform and I can reflect it. And I'm going to reflect it. I'm going to like essentially draw a line vertically right here, reflect it 90 degrees. You can preview that so it flips it. So there's my flip, right? But I can further go to shear, which is like. Um, if you were to angle it, so you can kind of play with that and think about how the angles work. Um, maybe you just want to angle it on a certain uh, axis. I don't know, this is not working correctly. I want it vertical. There we go. There we go. Roughly about what I want, maybe like 20. So that gets me kind of where I wanted to be with that. It's not three-dimensional, which, you know, actually there's a way we can fix that. Um, but roughly, it's it's kind of where we want to be. So I'm going to do an R. Um, I didn't really pay attention to how big I made my other letters, so I'm just going to sort of guess here. Right-click on it. Create outlines. We're doing the outlines so that we have an actual shape to work with. Okay. Uh, and then we'll right click again. Right clicking on a on a object uh, gives you a contextual menu, so a menu that is specific to that object. Okay, it gives you options. It doesn't give you all the options that you can do that object, but it gives you really common 
options for editing and, and manipulating. Right. Uh, we'll do the shear again. Uh, we will do let's do negative twenty to go the other way, which doesn't really look like enough. Maybe two or five. Yeah, you want to kind of keep it the same as this though. Oops. I mean, it, it is the same angle. It's a reflected angle, so. Yeah, it kind of works. Um, and then we can we can think about the 22. Oops. Um, do the 22. Which I think if I was doing this, well, actually we can fix that. So type, and we'll talk about this when we do. We'll talk about this more when we do actual type. Uh, when we do uh, the letter forms later. Well, tomorrow. Probably. Um, type has a couple of different options. One of those is called kerning, and kerning is the space between ind individual letters. And you can modify that. Right now, this is the, or they call it tracking in, in Illustrator, but it's really kerning. You can play with it. So if I want to make them closer together, you know, I just start picking something like that. So if I want them to touch, so about like that. Uh, all right, uh, bold, cool. Let's go. I'm going to want it to be. Well, yeah, I'm going to want it to be kind of like this. All right. Eh, I don't think that, feel, that doesn't feel right. I'll play around with that in a minute. Let's, um, let's make it just a little bit bigger and then make our outlines out of it. So a couple things you can do with this. You can try to rotate it to match that angle there. Right, maybe jump into outline mode. Remember that's command Y. Jump into your outline mode so that you just see your outlines to be able to line that up. So it's pretty parallel. Let's give me this as objects. Yeah. Um, and just line them up here a little bit better. You can see that my R and my E were not totally lined up. All right. So I have that, then I'll come in and go to transform, shear. Uh, hmm, let's think. Let's think about this. Uh, we need, we really need something like skew. Hmm. Well, let's go back to shear and see if we can play with that and get it to do what we want it to do. Um, I keep hitting enter, which gets knocks me out of it. I don't know if this is really gonna. That's not really gonna give me the options that I want. It's always going to be a, like you want to find this angle here, um, and this angle is probably what it would be. Uh, it's not though. It looks like it should be ninety, but you're thinking three dimensionally. You got to think two dimensionally. Is it one forty? Let's try one forty. Maybe I shouldn't have rotated then. Back up until. Not rotate anymore. Uh, I mess all back up. Boom. All right. Let's line this back up again. Oh, it's a little smaller. So I noticed that this was. There we go. Okay. That's good enough. Uh, all right, let's do this. Forty, negative one forty. Actually, that might be right. Ooh, very close. Just didn't rotate enough. Uh, 
<laughs> angles. Yeah. Geometry <laughs> for the win. Geometry, yeah. Geometry is way better. Geometry is fun. That's not geometry is. They always fun. say that people don't. Really so it's it's close, but it's not it's not totally where where we want it to be. You could, you know, I'm going to distort this kind of just terribly here for a second. Um, just because we want it to fit. So I'm going to really squish it. Um, yeah, so, you know, they're they're not going to match exactly because you're trying to fit two in where we have one. Um, but it's, it's, it's somewhat close. Um, there is actually another way to do this, uh, which is a little easier. Um, so... We'll grab uh, we'll grab our objects, say our letter forms again. So I'm gonna do an E, an R, and then my 22. All right. So there's actually a uh, 3D effects, uh, extrude and bevel. And so what this will do is it'll give you options. Um, you can preview those options too. Let's zoom in. If you don't, oops. Yeah. Let's I can let me zoom in. Let me, let's zoom in and then do it. All right, and let's give it a stroke uh, color. Oh, my swatch has disappeared. Nice. Your swatch has disappeared. Um, you can open up, you can open up like, the, it looks like books leaning up against each other uh, for all library. Um, you can come in and just pick your swatches out and it'll open them as a separate window and I usually just drag it and dock it over here. Um, like my thumbnails will be a little bigger. All right, so we'll get red maybe or something. Um, you wanna give it that stroke color because it's gonna use both those colors when it's doing the, the letter like that. So, uh, so this gives us sort of this, uh, there's a couple of different um, presets. I would use like isometric left or right. I would use that isometric and keep it. Um, so you can build your isometric. Let's flip our letter first. All right, then let's apply our effect. Isometric left. Let's preview it just to make sure it looks the way we want it to. That extrusion is a little severe. So let's go like 30. And I just hit tab so that I stay active in the window. If you hit enter, the window goes away and it saves the change. If you just hit tab, it goes to like a next selection part in that window. So you can kind of, it'll update the preview. Um, all right, that looks pretty good. Let's grab the R, give it that stroke color again. Uh, 3D, oops, my mouse is sticky. 3D, extrude and bevel, uh, isometric right. Same, same ones as before. All right, cool. We're gonna and we're gonna play with these in a second. We're gonna play with them in a second. We're gonna combine them. Um, the R, and then let's grab our numbers. Let's pull them over here. All right. So then let's do the effect on our numbers. Let's bevel. Isometric top. So this blue is the active letter or the active number. Okay, that's how you got to think about it. This shows you the face that the number is going to be on that cube. All right, I didn't give it a uh, stroke color. All right. Oops. And let's go top. Let's do bottom. Nope. All right, let's do top. But we want to rotate it. So, so we can rotate it in here. Mm, let's go 30. Nope. Not what we wanted. All right, let's try this again. Symmetric top, let's preview it. And then let's think about how we want to rotate it. This, not that way. It wasn't this way, huh? Am I weird? Let's think, 
grab this. If your computer is strong enough, it will actually let you uh, rotate and move just the cube around to kind of get the angle that you want. I don't know if your computer is not strong enough. My graphics card is kind of chugging. These should be okay, but that's roughly what we want. I'm gonna just do it there. All right, so we've kind of got we've kind of got the uh, the different shapes that we want. Oh, that's actually not at all what I want. Let me delete that. If you ever have um, effects you do that you want to get rid of. There's this little like, uh, I don't know, it looks like a sun to me, but it's a circle with little dots. It's kind of hard to see right there. Um, it's your appearance window. If I pull that out, it says appearance. Um, get rid of the character window there for a sec. Click on that and it shows you like all the effects that you've done to something. Um, so you can just delete that. You can delete that. You can just take off that extrude or I can double click on it and go in and change it. Um, so if you do want to keep the effect, but maybe you want to change the settings of that effect, just double click it. Uh, I'm going to come in and check out this top rotation again and try to figure out what is going on. Ready? All right, so this is 35. I don't get how that's so difficult to do. There. Oh, there we go. Thirty, maybe. Oh, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. All right, so there's there are my shapes, right? But notice that like it still shows me this outline of this this of the type tool, the type object. Right? I don't have like shapes or points that I can edit on the uh, of, of the actual three-dimensional shape. You can get that. All you need to do is go to ex Object Expand Appearance, and what that does is it like it saves the the 3D effect that we've added. So as opposed to the effect being like an illusion that you can go back in and edit and stuff, it bakes it. It makes it hard. It 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 keeps it and saves it. Right. So now you see it's a collection of anchors. All right, so I can select each of these and come in and go expand appearance. And now it's a collection of anchors uh, and paths. Okay, so points and paths. Now the reason we do this is because we're going to come in and we're going to get rid of some of these. Um, we're going to try a couple different ways actually. Uh, so we can, there are some nice like uh, object combining tools, they're called Pathfinder tools. So I can take like really complex objects and put them together. Uh, I'm gonna bring this one forward just a little bit. So if we put these on top of each other like this and come to grab our Pathfinder window, this lets us combine shapes. So I'm gonna start just like going through them. Well, that's not really what I want. It's also not what I want. That is not what I want. Well, that creates an interesting shape. Wow. All right, so I think we're going to have to manually edit some of these. Let's move our R over here. Let's get rid of uh, this face on our E. I don't need that anymore. So underneath it gives us all of our shapes because we kind of we just want this outside shape, really left hand shape and then these interior shapes and I want to keep some of that all right so I can bring all this in now line that up and right, it gives me the E and the R which is kind of nice and then think about the 22 how we want to combine that in there it's kind of gigantic so maybe we'll make it a little smaller I'm just, what I'm doing here is I'm looking at like where that middle point is, where this, the R ends, and right there, I'm trying to fit the, uh, 
base of the 22 in there. Okay. All right, so that more or less what I want, um, but I need to get rid of some of this bottom part stuff. So I'm gonna lock those layers. And you can lock just by selecting and either coming over to layers and of course I got a lot of stuff going on here. Just lock those two like that, or you can just hit command two and that will lock layers as well. Um, all right, so grab these guys, grab your direct selection tool. Remember that's that white arrow. That'll let you just select um, different vertices or smaller parts of vertices that instead of like the entire object. Let's delete some of this stuff so that we can clean it up. And keep some of those. So I'm looking right here to see like what what is necessary to keep and what isn't necessary to keep. Because I want to keep that sort of implication or the implied idea of there being like a third shape there. All right, so this doesn't totally line up, which is fine, um, but it's close. Um, from here, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, from here, we could, I'm gonna unlock these two things. Um, do a couple different things. We could just bring these forward. Of course, that causes some problems there. We might be able to combine them. Oh, that just gives us our outlines. Yeah. Kind of just cycle through these and see if one will give you the result that you want. Uh, yeah, no. Also, no, that creates a giant mess. So it's really, you know, you got to kind of go through and just play around with these and see what you can do. Um, some of these, maybe you do want to just uh, delete the rest of those um, bevels. You know, maybe you don't necessarily need it to look this three-dimensional. Uh, it's a lot of just, it's like, you, you try to use the tools to get you as far as you can, the automatic tools, and then from there, there might be some manual stuff that you're going to have to do, that you're just going to have to do. Like, you can't get away from it. Um, just clean up. Right, a little, maybe a little faking in some respects. Because it's not true three-dimensional space. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely um, simulated in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm just trying to like, line these back up again, but I don't know if that's gonna work. So, anyway, you can play around a lot with it, but you can see you can, al you can already get Illustrator to do a lot of heavy lifting for you. All right. Uh, if you didn't want to use these three-dimensional tools, there are multiple different ways to approach the same kind of um, function or the same sort of look. All right. Just depends on what you want to try, what you want to play around with. Um, things I want you guys to to really focus on: try using your um, your Pathfinder tools to make kind of more interesting shapes or combine shapes. So if I have lines and other shapes like I've got a polygon here, right? I can select all of these and say maybe, you know, give me the interiors. Ooh. Or I can say find all the, you know, connect them but keep the lines so that maybe, ugh, gross. Um, so that maybe I can do all the strokes and have them overlap. And then what it does is it actually creates different shapes. So here's a different shape in here that I can give um, different colors to, or this shape I can give different colors to, etc. Okay, so there's a lot you can do with just um, simple pathfinder tools and combining the shapes to make more complex paths. All right, so all of that, play around with your pen tools, your line tools. Um, you know, get comfortable looking at it in this this view, which is preview view. You know, with your stroke and your fill but also hitting command Y and going into your, your outline view just to see the paths, play with your type tool, convert your type over to outlines, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, any questions? I know it was kind of a lot. No? Yeah, demos are the most exciting thing in the world. All right, um, 